Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. Uh, and we've been calling the show Ask Dane for quite some time. We've been broadcasting now for almost two years, coming up on January 1st. Um, but today uh, we're going to begin the transition actually of separating the Ask Dane show from Fast Track Coaching. Uh, this is not um, going to impact you guys too, too much. It just means that you have to go to a new place to watch the Fast Track Coaching on Tuesdays at 1. But the uh, future shows starting in January, I'm hoping to actually start a second show that is more truly Ask Dane. I was laughing that Fast Track Coaching, what used to be called Ask Dane, we never really asked Dane very much. And, uh, and that's not, not a problem. I just noticed that um, it, the, the name of the show wasn't actually in line with what we did. It was really more around coaching. So the thought was with the new book coming out in December and um, a chance to reframe, we redid the website at fasttrackphotographer.com. It was a good chance to kind of um, call it what it is, which is Fast Track Coaching. So that's going to continue. Thanks to ShoeQ, uh, we're still going to be able to offer it for free. And uh, that'll be Tuesdays at 1 o'clock Pacific, 4 o'clock Eastern. And that's what today is. For those of you who are new to the Fast Track Coaching conversation, uh, this is uh, its pretty simple. It's just basically an excuse for, the, for a bunch of us to get together and have a dialogue um, with at least two people, uh, myself, my guest, and, and you. And uh, your participation um, is up to you. Uh, my hope is that it would be a, a lot of value in it. I know that you'll get a lot more value out of this 30-minute dialogue or conversation if you participate. And the way to participate is when I pipe in a guest from another part of the world, um, we use the vocal interface. When we're in person, I tend to use the Ustream interface. But um, the bottom line is for you to participate beyond just listening in, like watching TV, the hope is that you would actually engage, whether it be asking questions on Twitter or actually asking questions by hitting the light bulb um, in the lower right-hand corner and typing in the question or actually hooking up your video camera and asking questions that way. But I'm going to go ahead and type a quick little um, hello to folks and let them know that we're live. And then we'll get after it. One second. Oops, should have had this done before. By the way, if you guys can hear us okay, if you guys could let us know, that would be great. Other than the chat room or online, that'd be helpful. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed this or not, but I'm not very good at multitasking. I can do one thing at a time, period. <laughs> and I'm getting uh, a lot of tweets right now, which makes me think uh, that uh, you guys can hear me, which is great. Thank you for those messages. Um, and I'll send this right now. Perfect. Okay, so my guest today is none other than my dear, dear friend, uh, Aaron Fultz. And Aaron and I have been uh, in conversations for, um, gosh, a long time now, it seems. Uh, when, when Aaron came to the first roadshow I did in Austin, Texas a long time ago, uh, the conversation began. And that led to uh, extended conversations, which eventually led to her being a part of the mentoring program. She's a founder with the Fast Track uh, group. And uh, if you don't know what founders are, uh, I can talk about that another day. Or if you ask the question, we'll bring it up. But bottom line is, uh, Aaron is, is someone who thoroughly understands on a deep level what we're trying to accomplish with the Fast Track idea and Fast Track communities and, and, and the whole kind of philosophy behind it all. And um, it's funny, by, by making this week's show, you know, what in the world is mentoring all about? I put myself in a kind of a sticky position because, you know, of course I sell this mentoring program and I want to make sh explicitly clear before we start, my intention is not to try to convince anybody to sign up for my mentoring program at all. Uh, really the point is to invite someone who's actually outgoing, who's not going to be in the mentoring program here shortly, to give an honest assessment of the power of mentoring and what kind of resource that can be for you as you're trying to move your business forward. So if at the end of this call I or, or broadcast, my hope is that you would come to the conclusion that it's important that you have a mentor in your life, uh, someone that is speaking into and giving you value in a way that um, is is catalyzing your business. And if, if that's in, the, in place, I don't care if it's with me or someone else, just have that voice in your life. And at the simultaneous to that, Look for ways where you can be that voice in other people's lives. And we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute as well. 
<coughs> but without further ado, I want to bring on my friend Aaron. So Aaron, welcome to the show. I'm Hi. really glad you're here. And you guys will notice that Aaron, <coughs> excuse me, I still have that cough. Um, Aaron, uh, you actually can't notice because she's so ridiculously uh, thin, but uh, she is with child. And um, can you show us your belly? Would that be too inappropriate <laughs> on the internet? No. Okay. There we go. <laughs> belly. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's official. That is no pillow. That is real. And uh, Aaron, I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Um, it's fun to see the comments um, online and, and all over the place <coughs> where, I don't know what it is. I just had curry for lunch and all of a sudden I'm just like cough city. <laughs> um, so please forgive me. Oh, I know. I, know. I, I have coffee. That'll help me. Um, you've been in business now uh, as Aaron Fultz Photography for how long? How long? When, how long ago did you start? Um, officially about two years. Um, going into my third okay. year, um, officially. So yeah. Okay. And in many ways, you're kind of the the prototype of someone who you know you had tr formal training in college. Um, but mm -hmm. you're married, uh, you had a, a baby, um, and in many ways, um, you, you are the new photographer in Wedding and Portraits, uh, someone who, who has a, a, a desire around photography, uh, a, enough training to be dangerous and to get after it, um, but also uh, the vision to be entrepreneurial as a mom. And, um, from that perspective, maybe you could fill in some of the gaps of where I'm missing right now on, you know, what, what got you into this idea of you wanting to become a professional photographer? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I, um, I studied art in, in college and specifically focused on photography. And I, I went in not necessarily with the idea that I would have my own photography business someday. Um, I don't know that that was quite in my thought process um, at the time, but um, as I studied photography more and then really once I got out of college and started seeing the possibilities for having my own business and um, really in many ways <coughs> photography is in some ways really ideal for um, being a stay-at-home mom and kind of doing both having a business that is is something that I can do um, as well as just the flexibility of being able to schedule and and be home um, with my little ones um, so is that you it is my phone just ringing. <laughs> Yes, I'm hearing the sure. office I have my headphones well, what's <laughs> trying I'm going as my as from... something pop up online <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, actually, I'm so um, I'm so engaged in this conversation. I thought I would just start watching an episode of The Office. Is that okay with you? You don't. You don't Perfect. Mind, right? No problem. Yeah. Right. No problem. Right. So please forgive me. Keep um, going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, I. So anyway, as I got into photography and started shooting for people and um, so forth, and then getting my business established. Um, post college, I really actually very much surprised myself at how much I enjoyed the the business side of things and um, being an entrepreneur and um, that that side of it. In addition to the actual craft of photography and shooting, um, so it really has been quite an interesting journey. That I can't say that I set out on um, this this quest to have have this studio and, and thriving business so so much is it something that I enjoy doing but as I really got into it I'm, I'm very much a go big or go home like let's either do this or not do it I can't kinda half do it um, so uh, anyway if that answers that that's kind of where I've I've come and gone <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's interesting because there's a complexity to to the new photographer, at least in my experience with with working with a, a lot of especially women photographers who are who maybe don't, are burdened with more than uh, the stereotypical male is. I know in my situation, although I am married mm -hmm. and I have children, I don't have the same kinds of pressures that like my wife do, does. And and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, having stayed at your home and got to know, you know, you and your husband uh, decently well mm -hmm. now. I'm mm -hmm. I'm just so 
impressed with all that you have to maintain. And on top of that, you're throwing in this entrepreneurial effort. Um, does it ever feel like it's just too much? Like there's just, you can't, I mean, now you're pregnant with number two. It just seems like a lot to negotiate. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are certainly days where I say to myself, it would be so much easier just to quit all of this and, and be at home. But um, I know myself personally, and I have come to know myself, I think, in the last couple of years well enough to know that um, while I always thought that I was cut out to be like stay at home mom, I want to stay home with my kids, that sort of thing, um, it, it didn't come quite as naturally as I maybe thought it would. And having something that's sort of a separate identity from that um, has been, been really helpful and sort of a necessary thing for me. For me personally, I feel like, um, yeah. but sure. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of balls in the air. I think I've learned um, to be really intentional about my scheduling and what I take on, and um, learning, you know, by trial and error, and certainly learning the hard way sometimes that um, saying yes to too many things, get getting too many irons in the fire can can quickly um, create and wreak havoc just in my with my family and um trying to be real intentional and real um really um focused on on kind of where i'm going um which is is a journey i mean it's figuring that out it's not something that you figure out overnight which is where the mentoring well, has been really helpful well you know it's funny because uh, along those lines I, i'm really struck with a number of conversations have been in one that really uh, hit home to me was talking with Julia Woods um, about her experience as a mom and you know she has four kids and she and Jeff have been running their studio out in Illinois for a long time and she would talk about how she'd be she'd have, like have a baby on her hip and she'd be on the phone doing a booking meeting and she would um, you know be cleaning her you know camera bag getting ready to go on a shoot and putting on her mascara at the same time and and driving her car and mm -hmm. it seems like there were so many things at once um, and I get that the, the gross stereotype of, you know, women can multitask and men were, were more challenged. <laughs> um, there's a sense in which the, the ability to maintain a lot, even if that is present, there has to be an end to it or a limit. And this is where I'm feeling um, a little nervous in this conversation because I, I really don't want this to be an infomercial for mentoring with me. I really want it to be a conversation about the importance of having some kind of accountability, some kind of uh, people, person, even someone, just a, a small group of people locally who are saying, look, together as a group, we are going to establish some mode of support that helps gain perspective. Because I know for me, it, just with my own stuff that I'm, I'm juggling, it seems like it's very easy to um, think that I can keep saying yes to everything. And just throw another ball up in the air and juggle it and i need people in my life it's why i have my own coaches and my own mentors in my life <laughs> I, I met with one uh, early this morning um and and why these conversations are so important but talk a little bit about how you figured out how to say no to certain things and yes to others uh in a way that's been you know constructive i think the biggest thing has been um just in having, and in specifically, obviously, in my case, um, mentoring with you, but I mean, having somebody walk alongside me to help me really um, come to a place where I'm gaining more and more clarity on the vision and, um, or in on the clarity with what the vision of my business is. And once I got to a place which really has only been in the last few months, I mean, it's been a year really of. Tr lots of ideas and trial and error and things that just didn't land and just didn't stick and um, but just trying things until I got to the point where I, I am a little more clear on what my vision is and once I know that um, you know once I got there with with switching over to having Acorn Studio and the, the idea behind that um, has really helped me gain clarity so I know whether things fit within that vision, and if they don't fit within the vision, it makes it much much easier to say no to things um, when okay, you well, know what the big, let's, kind of the bigger picture is. Does that help? Yeah, 
It does. Well, let, let's talk about that specifically, because in your situation, obviously I have some context for this that the listeners don't have right now, but you started off as Aaron Fultz Photography and then switched over to mm -hmm. Acorn uh, Photography, and some of that became, came as a result of our conversations and work, but um, you know, it's funny, as I think back on the year or so that we worked together, if I had suggested Acorn Studios at the beginning of our conversation, I, maybe it would have connected, but my sense is that there was a real understandable resistance to, to that idea. Yet now, now that you've turned that corner, you've owned that vision, you've implemented, even in the mm -hmm. midst of adding more complexity to your life, it seems like you're more mm -hmm. at ease, more um, um, uh, in t integrous, uh, more authentic to you and what you need to be doing, at least what it seems like from the outside looking in. And um, talk a little bit about that internal transition for you as you walked from creating a, a solo studio around your brand name, or around your own personal name, mm -hmm. to creating a third party mm -hmm. brand and how that, for whatever reason for you, was a good fit. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a lot of and, and even a, a lot of kind of the bu the buzzwords, I guess, in the industry right now are just making making your brand about you around around you as an individual and what makes you specifically unique. And I think that is totally true um, and and good. The struggle that I personally had was this feeling of, okay, um, I'm supposed to make this brand around me, who's supposed to be really unique and I don't really know what that is and what do I specifically bring to the table um, that's different than the guy next door down the street and I really struggled through figuring out what that was and somehow hmm. um, associating it with me personally and with my name there just was a roadblock there that I just could not get past and I just felt like I could never quite define who I was enough um, to make it make sense translated into a brand. Um, so somehow moving, kind of having a one degree of separation, and so it was no longer under my name, but it was under Acorn Studio, and it was more about the story behind that than it was about me personally, although I so much inform what that is. Um, that That's where the transition for me um, and really owning that became almost freeing because it, although it is very much tied to me, not having my name personally put on it and feeling like I'm having to figure out who Aaron Fultz authentically is enough to, you know, put out there that I just had a real hang up with that. And it was just a difficult thing for me to, to, um, to do. So the switch to Acorn just made a lot of sense for me personally. Yeah. Well, it's, it's fun. I mean, I, I have the benefit of having a great seat in our conversation and, and watching mm -hmm. your evolution. Uh, I remember in the early days, a lot of the conversation seemed to be around, um, and understandably so, kind of the more pragmatics of the business, like how do I generate more leads? How do I get more business? How do I get whatever? Mm -hmm. And then it, over time, it seemed to evolve into, you no, know, really, what is my vision? Because if I can lock into mm -hmm. my business vision and then strategically align what I'm doing around that vision and then manage for efficiencies and build a frontline system and and kind of outsource team and all of it. it. It just seemed like you, it was like, it didn't move quick, quick, quick at the beginning, but then mm -mm. even in recent conversations, it said like, you know, now you picked up steam and it just seems like you're going at a pace that is almost unthinkable even half a year ago, uh, especially given the fact that you're about to have another baby, like you're planning even beyond the baby. Um, yeah. I, What's that like for you? I mean, to, to kind of pick up that kind of pace. I, that's not quite the question I want to ask. I, I guess, number one, I'm just observing. It, it's just... I can't hear you. Can you hear me? <sighs> K. 
Can you hear me now? Now I. Now. Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, nope. Is that any better? Yeah, that's better. I can hear you now. Am I back? Okay. Yeah, you're back. Okay, I, I had to switch mics for whatever reason. Okay, I don't know what the deal is, but uh, sorry about that, you guys. Um, and I know it's a little loud. I gotta turn the clipping down just a second. Uh, adjust the volume. beginning um, of your of your time uh, turn it up is that not loud enough hello hello <laughs> can you guys not hear me you're you're not quite as loud as you were before when you were coming through one second Ginger saying that when you were loud, it was actually good. Okay. Is that better now? Can you hear me better now? Yeah, I can hear you good. And it, it looks like from the feed that everybody else can hear you good. Great. Okay, so... Uh, now I sound like a cell phone coming in. Yeah, that's funny. Um, okay, so I'm back in. What I was going to ask you was, I'll have to clip that out of the edit somehow, um, but at the beginning of your, your mentoring, it wasn't moving at a very quick pace because we were transitioning mm -hmm. from the pragmatic questions to the more deep vision-oriented questions. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about uh, patience at the beginning of a, a mentor relationship relative to the payoff um, near the end of the relationship. And obviously we're not ending. I'm, I'm grateful for our friendship mm -hmm. for life. Um, but as you transition out of the formal program for a while, um, uh, talk about the transition of, of finding a way to be patient on the front end and, and the kind of payoff that you got on the back side. Sure, yeah, I feel like, I mean, it was certainly slow going there at first. And um, there were certainly, you know, just, months even several months in a row where I felt like you know I don't know I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere but I feel like I'm just having to keep taking steps and um, just knowing that well kind of hindsight now being where I am now and looking back is um, you know it just takes even if you feel like you don't, you're not going anywhere it, going through the motions of trying to get somewhere even if it doesn't seem like you're getting anywhere actually is productive um, because for me anyway it was a lot of um, ruling out possible options of, of directions to go um, just trying things on for size and um, sort of risking this feeling that at least I felt like I don't know if my friends and family felt like oh she just has yet another great idea like what is it this week <laughs> it's you know constantly changing um, but to, to go through those steps and um, to, to just log kind of log hours almost of um, continuing an effort to move forward and just just being in conversation with somebody regularly to get feedback mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Um, and somebody in like in our situation you getting to know me continually over the course of um, the mentor relationship can even provide even more valuable feedback the longer that you know me 
personally oh, yeah. and the things that that play in um, and that just takes time like it just it just does I mean there's no substitute for um, hours logged in a sense yeah I agree I mean there's a sense in which longevity uh, the old phrase you can't buy longevity uh, that makes sense to me it, it does take time and even some of the folks that I'm looking in the chat room that are, like Ginger Murray who's always someone I, I love to uh, tease a little bit and connect with um, uh, even folks overseas I'm seeing like uh, Ross is on from England and Brian's on from Canada and uh, Pickles Jamie I see you uh, probably from Boston I'm guessing and um, you know there, there's a lot of folks Kristen I think I see you there too and Amber Michelle I see you Chris Johnson's making dinner there's a sense in which I'm getting to know all you guys a little bit uh, better um, with every conversation but there, there is a sense in which when you combine familiarity with intention, where you know my job mm -hmm. is to pay attention to what's going on with you in your life, to give you feedback and resource to help direct your, your efforts to get a better return. That's when it gets exciting. Like when I think of, of uh, those early days, I mean, candidly, Aaron, I remember thinking back as, as your mentor, thinking like, crap, can I give her anything valuable here? Like, am I actually <laughs> going to be able to deliver? And and I'm so grateful to have stayed in that conversation for as long as we did because it not only helped in my, you know, hopefully with you and your business, and it did, and we can talk about the specifics of that in a minute, but it helped me tremendously in my own business and it helped me with, as I was helping other businesses. And I, I'm just amazed at the ripple effect of sticking with it staying focused, um, paying attention, listening well, giving honest feedback even when it's uncomfortable. Um, those mm -hmm. kinds of dynamics are, are very significant to me and, and uh, I'm, I know I'm grateful. There, there's some cool questions that are coming in too, by the way. Um, it, there's a live video question I'm going to get from Carlo Gesner in just a second, but another set of questions that came in through Twitter, um, and I'm curious what you'd say about this, is um, this is Jeff Noon, he's also in Canada. He says, what should we look for in a mentor? Should someone, someone who has actually, someone who has achieved what I aspire to achieve, photography related, spiritually related? How would you answer that kind of a question? Uh, it's kind of a bulk set of questions. Yeah, um, I would say, I don't know necessarily somebody that's achieved what, what you want to achieve, just because everybody's sort of path to getting you know where you want to go is going to be different for each person even if you feel like you're wanting to head in the same direction um, I would say it's important to find somebody that has similar of similar value set a, as you and um, I think one of the most important things would be somebody that you can that you know without a doubt and you said this a minute ago that you're going to get honest feedback regardless of whether it's comfortable or not because that's that's what is really gonna um, you know, be able to, to propel you forward is somebody that you know is is going to be honest with you, regardless of whether they think you're going to like what they have to say or not. Um, and as uncomfortable as that can be, sometimes that's really um, can be some of the most helpful feedback. Um, in in having you actually get somewhere and not just walking on a treadmill and never going anywhere. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's, it's funny. Two things come to mind um, about that. One is I want to ask you when, if you could think back, when were you most uncomfortable in one of our conversations where I was saying something that you didn't necessarily like or, uh, mm -hmm. or whatever. And by the way, I need to qualify this, that Aaron lives in Jackson, Mississippi, where it's a cultural <laughs> value that you never out loud declare that we're ever uncomfortable. So <laughs> I, I, if she says in a minute, if she says the words, Bless your heart. Ask, like before she, what she really, what she really means is something that, like in New York, they would say it differently. But anyways, Aaron, uh, do you have any kind of recollections of, of moments that you didn't totally love? Hmm, that's a good one. I'm always really terrible at thinking back at real specific examples, so I don't know that I can that I can think about anything super specific. Um. I don't know. I mean, there definitely have been have been times where maybe I've and I, I can't remember real specifics, but I had an idea about something, or 
and was just, you know, spouting off some of my ideas and getting this feeling of like, no, that like, you're just, I, I guess feeling like when I would ha going through some of the motion of just trying things on for size to see if it would land and not landing, um, getting the feedback uh -huh. from you saying, you know, I really don't think that that is authentic to who you are and I'm going well I don't know what's authentic to who I am like I'm trying yeah. here I'm trying <laughs> this is not encouraging I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere but you cared enough to be honest with me and had I tried to land there and stay there for a while it would have been not good I mean it I wouldn't be where I am mm. now and I wouldn't have so mm. Some of those conversations were probably well, some of the most, at least frustrating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny, The uh, I, that's what I remember too, is moments of internal angst. Like I never actually felt a sense of conflict in our dialogue ever, actually. But what mm -hmm. I did kind of sense was this, this internal tension of like, am I going to break through? Am I going to find a way? Am I, uh, mm -hmm. And you're right, that trying on for size thing. Um, Sometimes you try on a pair of jeans and they, they don't fit right. And I mm -hmm. think um, having another perspective where the interest is in your, like where I can bracket my self-interest for the sake of paying attention to what's really in your best interest um, and being open to being wrong. I remember there's other conversations where I would say, well, does that seem right? And you would say, well, it, it, it does align. And you know, you're the authority, not me, but my job is to keep asking mm -hmm. those questions and keep mm -hmm. kind of poking holes at, at kind of the master plan. But it's funny, I remember mm -hmm. specifically the day that you landed on Acorn, it was like, it was a magical conversation. And it was almost yeah. like this kind of, compared to all the other trying ons, I remember that day in particular where it was just kind of like, well, there it is. Well, you know, all the while we've been looking at abracadabra and it was literally, yeah. I think we actually cut the conversation off short. You kind of raced off the door and did a bunch of things, talked to you in a month and all of a sudden, yeah you know, Acorn existed and your website had changed and everything had shifted. Um, yeah. And I, I guess that's the part where I kind of want to give people some hope of like, even if they're frustrated and they feel like they're kicking the tires too much or they're, they're beating their head against the wall or whatever metaphor they want to go with, there is a light at the tunnel, at the end of the tunnel where you can kind of, you can significantly turn a corner and see a lot of ground taken in a short period of time if you stay with it mm. in conversation with other people. Would you agree? Oh, totally. Yeah, I would almost, I would almost sort of associate it, you know, as a kid, at least girls, as kids, we asked, you know, in talking about like getting married, if you want to get married, like, how do you know if he's the one, you know, that sort of thing It's almost like that, you just know. And it was all of a sudden, it was like, I, I'm pretty sure, like, it was almost div divinely inspired in that I, I don't think I it wasn't a forced trying to like come up with come up with what is it it just it happened and it made a lot of sense and all of a sudden it was like that's it and it made it really easy to move forward pretty quickly once I got to that's it um, hmm. so I mean not to say that there haven't been you know lots of you know, decisions made and hours logged and, you know, stuff. I mean, it's there, but it, once you get to that landing spot, moving forward is, is pretty easy to gain some traction and go once you have landed in, in yeah. the right place. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to take a couple of questions and, uh, right now. Uh, Carlo, uh, I guess is on and I'm going to broadcast him in a second. And Carlo, uh, I'm going to get you to jump on ask your question and then I'm going to drop the call just so that we can, if we don't have any bandwidth issues, we can all hear it. But I know you have some questions around, uh, well, specifics uh, out of how to get the most out of a mentor relationship. So let me, let me pull you on now. Are you there, Carlo? I know he is there, but maybe, he, oh wait, I hear typing. Hey, can you hear me? We can. Just go, can we can't you. see you, Carlo, but we can hear you. So go ahead and go ahead and ask okay. the question. Yeah. I'd rather have my identity concealed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, um, I mean, my question for you is, um, I, I had a mentor uh, actually when I was very, very, just, just barely starting out. Like I had just discovered that wedding photography was cool 
and there was all kinds of uh, you know new things going on and whatnot. And, and basically, like I, I, the mentor that I had, I found that a lot of times people that were local to me were very hesitant to speak to me about any kind of photography business questions that I had. Mm -hmm. And I found yeah. that almost every time I was comfortable to go outside of market to talk to somebody that was willing and just pumped about the fact that I was a new and upcoming photographer. And um, I'm kind of like in this place now where uh, I'm, I'm kind of looking for a new mentor uh, because I've, I've moved uh, to a new location and my other mentors is, is pretty far away and I know that they're super busy too handling their own business. And I, I'm wondering also like how, I, I know with you and Dane, you guys have kind of, I mean, you were part of the, the mentorship program, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Like, how do you find that you can like, how do you, how do you find that you can give back to Dane for all this knowledge that he's giving you also at the same time? Like, is there, are there any <laughs> moments where it's just kind of like outside of, the, outside of like the dollar amounts and all that type of stuff? I mean, obviously like, you know, when we do business with our clients and stuff like that, the dollar is kind of like way in the back of our mind. But, you know, as far as like, I mean, essentially like the mentor that I had before was like priceless to me because yeah. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to answer. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Basically, like as far as your mental relationship, how do you feel that that's? How do you feel that that's? Can you value that? Is that does that go beyond like the arrangement? Y well, yeah. Carla, let me interrupt because uh, let, let me say this real second, Aaron. Uh, I, what I'm hearing you say, Carlo, is is on some level, is there a reciprocity in the relationship that needs to be accounted for? And I I want to hear Aaron's thoughts on that. Number one. But I also know too, in your um, initial questions that you talked about, you are curious about um, you know, time management and outsourcing uh, and how that relates to the mentor relationship. So I'm gonna leave you on the line for a second in case you have to, if you wanna ask questions about that in a second. But I guess, first of all, Aaron, what are your thoughts about kind of the reciprocal nature of our, of our relationship? Uh, because you know, obviously you paid me to become part of this, join the mentor program, you helped feed my kids and all that. But I know for me at least there's, uh, it, it definitely feels like it's it's a different level of collegiality than with almost anybody in the industry because of the, just the amount of hours that we've logged. But why don't you come up, comment on it instead? Yeah, um, I would certainly say that over time. I mean, at first, um, at first, I don't know that I would have been able to honestly say that I felt like we were sort of equal colleagues. I, I mean, I don't know that I would have said that starting out, but. Um, you know, over a year now into it, I would say just as we've gotten to know each other and, um, you know, interact and so forth, that sort of thing, I would, I would certainly say that um, I very much more so feel like we're colleagues than, um, even though, yes, I am, have been paying you to, to be in this mentor relationship, um, I would certainly say that I feel like we're friends now beyond just a mentor relationship. Um, do I feel like I have have given back to you or um, that sort of thing? I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that I feel like I have honestly. In many ways, um, I think some of it has just been as I have come to understand the just the fast track philosophy and um, that sort of thing. Wanting to 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 continue that on in my area um, locally has been something that and to propel that forward um, yeah. maybe in some ways would be um, but beyond that I don't know if that answers the question really but well let's talk about that for a second because um, and by the way Ginger Murray I love your comments in the chat room I'm gonna bring this up in just a second but like, for example, I have um, a one mentor in my life right now is a guy named Scott Bourne. And some of you guys know who Scott is. Uh, he's a, a nature photographer who's been around the industry for a long time. And uh, he's one of those guys that every time something exciting happens in my life, I call him up to celebrate it. And he basically like knocks me down three pegs and says, um, uh, <laughs> and, 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 and just reminds me of, of how normal and pedestrian my life really is. And um, he does that because he expects a lot out of me, and and in that he he's very direct with his feedback, and he's not impressed with much of anything that I've ever done, <laughs> um, but I can tell that at heart he believes in me, and and he really challenges me. I mean, literally a couple hours ago we were on the phone, and he dared me to uh, 
to come out uh, to Las Vegas and he wants to help me kind of take new ground in some areas that I, I feel totally insecure in uh, and I think it's going to be amazing. Um, but the fact that he would care enough, and it's interesting when I ask him, why would he do this? Because uh, Scott isn't really in a position where he needs a lot of money or anything. And he says, you know, the reason I'm doing it is because I believe in you, but I also, um, I know, I really trust that you're going to do this for other people. It is, it's, it's not just kind of this pithy pay it forward thing. It's, it's real. And when you get invested in, in this kind of way, it's a little bit deceiving, especially if there's money transacting to feel like, oh, you know, the deal is done. But the folks who really get benefit of this, they get infected with something. And they end up, it mm -hmm. becomes kind of a big chunk of their life uh, and who they are. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I, there's no question. I mean, Aaron, I, I love you. I think you're one of my favorite people, mm -hmm. period. And, and you happen to be, we share the same industry. And now I'm invested because I, I know your family. I know your husband. I know your kids. And mm -hmm. uh, I just feel connected. You know, uh, you've been out to California. You've mm -hmm. met my wife. And I expect us mm -hmm. to be friends for a long, long time, uh, for, for life. Mm -hmm. And I also mm -hmm. recognize that when we're in a conversation and you're paying me, uh, there's a responsibility, there's a duality to our friendship where it's not just friendship, it's my job to mm -hmm. really be paying attention for the sake of you and your business, to have a stake in your success. So that when you succeed, mm -hmm. I actually have a sense of like, I was part of that. And, and it's funny because mm -hmm. in the chat room, um, Ginger Murray, who we, who we both know, uh, made some comments about her mm -hmm. coach. She said, I have a coach and I feel there's this weight because of the accountability that I feel like if I don't do my homework or do what I said I needed to work on, that I'm letting him down because coaches really do care about you or they should. So I think that when I succeed, it's a benefit for my coach to see as well. He feels that he succeeds. That totally resonates with me. I mean, I, if Aaron had failed, I would have failed. I, I would have felt awful. And I tell, I tell people in the mentor program all the time, either you're going to succeed and you're going to keep paying me and, you're, and the money you're making is going to pay my way or you're going to fire me or I'm going to fire you because we have work to do. Mm -hmm. And what gives us permission to be in this conversation is success. But um, mm -hmm. that doesn't dictate our friendship. We could be friends, people who have been in and out of the program, I'm friends with for life, period. So you're not paying for a friendship. You're, mm -hmm. you're paying for mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a real training effort to help move the needle of your business, as Chris Brogan likes to call it. So um, by the way, I love that Aaron Dixon wrote, Erin is definitely paying it forward in her community. She is a phenomenal leader and doing so much for photographers in our area. And I, I am with you, Erin. There's no doubt that that is what marks Erin. Um, oh, Erin. <laughs> <laughs> Bless her heart, yeah. I love Erin. I do. <laughs> she knows I do. I'll see you tonight, dear one. I'll see you tonight. <laughs> All right. Now, Carla, I see that you're, back, so you're still here and you're actually on screen now. So I can see, see you now. You. <laughs> uh, which is great. Uh, so, Carlo, I'm wondering, what was the? Uh, did you have any other questions about time management or outsourcing or mentor relationships that we need to make sure we cover before we transition? Yeah, absolutely. I'm finding myself. I just a uh, little ba little background on me. I just made it through my first year of actually paying all my bills as a photographer, uh, which was quite an adventure. Congratulations! So I quit my job last year. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. But now I'm starting to kind of get into the zone where it's like, wow, like I'm the CFO, I'm the CEO, I'm the photographer, I'm the salesperson, I'm the marketing person. And the first thing I want to, you know, I, I think when I, when I listen to Erin and she talks about the growth of her business and her, her new child that's coming and her family, I'm wondering at what point um, did you decide to stop doing the late nights and start outsourcing and where's a good place to start? If you do outsource, cool. I don't know if you do anything. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and drop drop you, Carla, for now. But um, go, go ahead, Aaron. What do you think? Thanks, Carla, for the question. Yeah. Um, you know, I am I am very low volume, so I'm not. I mean, I don't have ten and fifteen sessions coming through on a weekly basis. So, I mean, that sure that certainly plays into it. Um, some of the outsourcing, and I didn't catch Carla whether you're. It, weddings is that I think that he's doing weddings um anyway I think so. I, I, I think did so. begin outsourcing yeah he said okay um I I did begin outsourcing um, basic editing with all the weddings that I do which was huge um, just to take take that off my plate um, the other thing is just setting client expectations I know at first 
I felt this need to have this super quick turnaround and get things back to clients and that sort of thing and not that I don't try to have and do have a consistent turnaround time and that sort of thing but really being realistic about for me what that can look like in the in relationship with what else I have going on with my family and so forth and um, I mean there's certainly tools like ShootQ who sponsors this like I'm a ShootQ user love them that's helped me stay organized and some things like that um, beyond that as far as outsourcing beyond outsourcing wedding um, basic wedding editing that's really the only thing that I outsource um, other than like lab fulfillment um, you know that sort of thing I don't yeah. do all my own printing or anything like that but um, well, and, and it's funny. Aaron, first off, actually, Aaron, can is our is your video screen frozen at all? You are frozen. Can you hear? I, me? I'm not. Okay. I can see so myself moving. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for whatever reason, I froze mine, but I think we can still hear each other. Um, I'm going to go okay. ahead and um, uh, I'm not going anywhere. You guys, it's going to look like we're pausing the event, but we're not. Well, actually, I'm nervous. We're just going to keep it going because we're we're almost done anyways. But um, I remember in a lot of our conversations, um, you were really resistant to to outsourcing. And it's funny, uh, Carlo, mm -hmm. if I get to work with Aaron again in the spring, I'm going to spend a lot more time helping her outsource uh, a lot of pieces. And if you think, Aaron, about our more recent conversations about bringing in other people, I, I yeah. just think that you, you st I still haven't done my job enough yet for you to get it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm being a little tongue in cheek there. But, but I think that there's a lot in the timing of those things, Carlo, and thinking through mm -hmm. the when and wherefore of all that really, really makes a big difference. Um, we are almost at a time, and with the frozen screen, I'm, I'm not sure how much is being recorded, so I want to be sensitive to that as well. But um, we do have this one question from Creative Images says, uh, how do you find a mentor that is willing to help me grow as a photographer? And so I guess embedded in that question is, if you don't want to pay somebody, um, is it reasonable to expect that somebody will be a mentor for you? How would you respond to that, Erin? Um, I would say, I would say definitely. Um, you know, I don't know if you have like a fast track group even in your area that, in and of itself, would be a huge resource in finding a mentor just because they're coming from a standpoint of. Um, understanding and really believing that you know when we're we're all for each other and helping each other grow um, you know it, it only benefits everyone um, I would say too I mean it doesn't necessarily need to be another photographer um, it could be someone that's just in the creative industry or someone who has um, great business sense um, that that could could give you a feedback because really in so many ways um, at least I feel like the success of of a mentor relationship isn't so much about being in the same industry or anything like that as it is having somebody that will really listen to to you and um, you know where you are where you're hoping to go and and just giving you honest feedback because in in many ways the conversations that I've had with Dane it's not like this magic bullet of him say go do this and than me seeing success follow. It, it was more about just the conversation and having um, an honest sounding board and, and somebody giving honest feedback than it was about somebody and certainly knowledge of, of photography and the photography industry helps but um, I don't think that that's a necessity. So when you're looking for somebody I don't know that it may broaden your your options a lot if you go beyond that particularly in communities where um, photographers still are awfully grumpy so <laughs> yeah well it's funny that's actually a decent segue timing wise because um, I wanted to mention a couple things one at the top of this I mentioned that I do have a mentor program and if folks are interested in finding out more certainly email me uh, at connectedanesanders.com and we'll tell you more about it but the the bigger thing that I wanted to mention at the beginning was how we're splitting fast track coaching from Ask Dane and we're going to create a new show in January and I'll send you guys some emails on this later if you're signed up for my newsletter but um, the uh, the Ask Dane show is actually I'm, I'm experimenting with it but I think what I'd like to do is actually do 
a free live cons consult with individuals where I, do, I model this exact stuff, where the stuff that you and I do, Aaron, have been doing for you know a year, uh, I'll be doing on one-time efforts with an individual and we'll do, kind of do a live coaching where um, I get to ask and, and be asked questions and, uh, and to get on the show, you just need to apply and we'll, we'll take applications and it's free and uh, hopefully folks who are at home can uh, learn through the experience. Um, I know I'll learn a ton, but if that's the thing you're interested in, please let me know. Um, it's a lot of work to do all these kinds of things and uh, uh, I don't want to do it unless it is valuable to you guys, but if it is, please let me know. Uh, and I think that it could be the kind of thing that we can model a culture of mentoring where we all kind of are collegial and helping each other out, which is, I think, ultimately what would be the dream. Um, we don't, you know, if, if you charge for it or whatever, that has to be justifiable. I know for me, it takes a lot of time away from my photo business to do it, so I don't feel badly at all charging. I just want to make sure that people are getting the results for it. And Aaron, if, if you're any example of, of uh, the results, um, I would I would do this kind of work every day, all day, because it's, it's just so fun uh, to see someone like you flourish. And, and I, the next time we see each other, of course, um, there won't be three in your family, there'll be four. Uh, and yeah, when, whenever hope. you do, so people can know about it. Well, that's right. Well, four or five or six, uh, whatever. But uh, uh, you're, oh you're, you're doing a few weeks. Is that right? Yeah, I have about two weeks. Huh. A little over two weeks. December two 16th weeks. is my due date. So, so we're hoping for before Christmas. All right. Well, as somebody who has a Christmas baby, uh, that's a great gift, regardless mm -hmm. of when, when uh, your baby comes. But um, <laughs> if, uh, if you guys want to be... Uh, uh, in any way, like Aaron, your Twitter is at Aaron Foltz, correct? Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you're at home and this is valuable to you in any way, please, please, please reach out to Aaron. Uh, wish her a happy Thanksgiving and Merry Christmas and a happy new baby. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, you want to send her gifts and prizes, feel free. Uh, diapers <laughs> are totally welcome. Uh, but um, hey. Aaron, I just I can't thank mm -hmm. I can't thank you enough for being on today's show and for being my friend. Mm -hmm. For giving me a chance, um, mm -hmm. uh, there's no question. I think what's odd about being in a mentor position is um, how much I benefited. And you mentioned earlier you weren't sure how much I benefited mm -hmm. from it. That's silly. I uh, I'm clearly the big winner in this in this relationship. And uh, although I, I'm really pleased to see your business grow, it's it's uh, really been moving to have the privilege of of doing this with you. And, and I look forward to future days where we can continue. But. Um, Thanks again for being on the show. And if you guys are at home and you're wondering, gosh, how can I, how can I either get a mentor? My encouragement is to try to figure out a disposition where you are a mentor, where you where you bring whatever you have in your hands mm -hmm. to the table, and offer it up. Whether it be in the context of a, a community group like the fast track groups, or, or you know, Smug or Pictage or whatever group you're a part of, um, or it's just a friend of coffee. If you have an attitude of I'm going to mm -hmm. listen and I'm going to be for the other person. Um, It'll be amazing to see the kind of resource that could show up for you in your business and your life. So uh, that's it for now. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. And uh, uh, we'll talk to you guys next time. So thanks, Erin. Thanks. It's been fun.